Good day to our viewers and welcome to another episode of the Itiguini Matters podcast. My name is Celine Dilekzele and I will be your host for this episode. October is Transport Month and this is an annual commemoration of transport infrastructure, increased awareness of various transport related topics and the important role that transport plays socially and economically. It invites the participation from civil society and business in providing safer, more affordable, accessible and reliable transport systems for our city. Delivering efficient, reliable and safe transport services is a key objective for our government as an effective transport system is vital to our economy, connecting people with jobs, schools, shops, friends and families. Here to tell us more is Mr. Berthwell Mantwadi, who is the acting head of the Eteguini Transport Services. Sabona Babunjani. Sabunjani, Thank you. Please tell us more about ETA, its mandate, role and strategies. Okay. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Thanks, Lynn. Um, ETA, as we've said, stands for Etiquini Transport Authority. Yes. And authority by its nature becomes actually a, a regulatory body. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and as such, we then focus on the uh, transport authority related or transport strategies related to how we deal with uh, mobility uh, within the city itself. Mm -hmm. So. In terms of the, the, the mandate of the ETA, first of all, it is confined within the Etiquini region. Mm -hmm. And we're looking more at different facets uh, within the, the mandate itself, which starts off with the, your strategic transport planning, mm -hmm. ensuring that uh, the planning of our transport infrastructure within the city and uh, mobility thereof is done in a strategic manner. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, delivering the um, your transport infrastructure, so your planning should actually speak to what is it that you ultimately delivering as an infrastructure. Critical important is the issue of your traffic management as well, mm -hmm. which becomes part of the key responsibilities of the Tequity Transport Authority. Mm -hmm. And lastly, uh, looking at the issue of uh, contracting, more especially looking at the uh, subsidized uh, bus services contracting function. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, that's in the natural way we actually find ourselves. Now, when we respond strategically relating to the mandate itself, it's important to look at sustainability. Mm -hmm. And that talks more with the issues of looking how do we deal with the issues of climate change. And you'll see as we go along, we'll expand on that. But mm -hmm. in a nutshell, that's what I would say the, the, the ETA responds to. And in responding to that, you require certain mechanisms. And within the, 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 the unit itself, we have three uh, departments which actually work hand in hand to ensure that these strategies are rolled out, which mm -hmm. is you have what we call road systems management that deals more with your transport infrastructure, your strategic mm -hmm. transport planning for the planning part of it, and the public transport uh, side of it as well. You know, your minibus, minibus taxis, your all these other modes, e-hailing and so forth. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Mantwadi, please tell us more about the city's vision uh, in terms of uh, transport, yeah. both public and private. Yeah. So um, if, you want, if, if you take back from what we just spoke about now in terms of the mandate mm -hmm. of the transport authority itself, the key uh, <coughs> um, issues that we're looking at mm -hmm. in terms of the vision of the city is one issue of mobility, and secondly, issue of accessibility. So that's, that's, that's what actually informs the vision itself. And as such, uh, we are to provide and manage a world-class uh, transport system mm -hmm. which actually responds to those. Mm -hmm. So you have uh, mobility on one side and also accessibility on the other side. And if those are dealt in a manner that is scalable and also uh, functional, at the end of the day, then you find you, you get what we term sustainable and affordable uh, mechanisms of transporting people from A to Z. Mm, mm, mm. Please tell us what are the plans for this year's uh, Transport Month and um, when can we expect op uh, the Gold Durban operations to, to start? I was um, expecting that. <laughs> I think it's common cause that uh, we've been waiting for the operations of Oh, they went for years now. Yes. Um, I can tell you that it's also something that keeps me awake at night mm -hmm. because I would want to see that infrastructure being used. So, mm -hmm. 
I think just to give a context, before an operation, any operations within the public transport space, you require two things that are critical, which is the business plan and the operations plan. Yeah. Okay. So, since you know that this system would have been operational by now, we hope we, we had wished for, but unfortunately because of some challenges that we faced, we had to look at what other mechanisms can we use mm -hmm. um, to you know, go over the issues that, we, that became an impediment mm -hmm. in, in, in operating our Go Devon. And the amended approach that we're following is what we termed uh, the tactical adjustment framework. Mm -hmm. So it's not actually moving away from classically what the IPTN is supposed to be, but is to say, you know, you can't keep on doing the same thing and hope to get a different result. We've tried this for many years and we've always yeah. been having a glitch to go live based on issues that we unfortunately are facing now. So this tactical adjustment will assist us to see, to find a way of becoming operational. But yeah. for that to happen after it has been approved by the city, which has, it has been approved, mm -hmm. we needed then to develop what you call that, uh, the business plan and the operations plan, which mm -hmm. responds to that. Mm -hmm. Now when that is approved, then it gives rise to okay. certain things that needs to happen. Now, g having given then, within the next weeks and months, there are a few activities going to be happening mm -hmm. in ramping up towards the go live mm -hmm. for, for Go Devon. First, we're looking at uh, issues such as contracting negotiations. Mm -hmm. Because remember, the system and um, what, what, what it ended up doing was to affect the current operators. It will affect them in terms of their operations. Yeah. So we need to negotiate with these public transport operators to ensure that they are not getting, they are not becoming worse off they were before the IPTN comes in. Mm -hmm. that, that's that's critical, and also looking at the issue of empowerment. So what we will be looking at is the new contracts that uh, that will be coming through. Secondly, dealing with the uh, amendments of the memorandum of agreement that we have with the stakeholders, mm -hmm. like your Moja Cruise, and also uh, to look at the start of the services that will be part of the Go Devon itself, which will start with the uh, feeder services. Mm -hmm. Now, feeder services meaning, you know, feeding uh, uh, your, your your commuters to the trunk uh, facility, which is your your go and facility and also looking at the various spheres of government on how they increasingly can get involved mm -hmm. in ensuring that this system uh, uh, gets on board or get online. Mm -hmm. Now when all that is said and done, key dates by the 31st of October 2023, mm -hmm. we're hoping that our sphere services will be up and running. Mm -hmm. That's what we're ramping up towards. Mm -hmm. And when that is happening, then followed by that will be the commissioning of the C3 route, mm -hmm. the one from Pine Town to um, Bridge City. Yeah. Um, the infrastructure is there, but we need to do some commissioning that, that's required to make sure that the system functions properly. And on that, then we focus, we're looking at getting or uh, going live uh, around February 2024. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's important to note that um, this is a plan. <laughs> and, and our hope is that as we plan around and ramping up, that will make it easy and al also we should be able to, to make that date. Mm. And, and, and lastly, maybe just to mention is that the implementation of complementary services beyond the feeder services, we're looking at that starting around April 2024. Mm. So those are the mm. tight deadlines we put ourselves in, given the fact that we've, we've really wanting to be operational for so long and that yeah. has not yet happened. Yeah. I see you, you, there's big plans for Go Durban yeah. um, and some of them are going to take place this month uh, yeah. since it is the month of, of transport. Right. Um, but how, how uh, um, is the city commemorating um, this month as uh, it is October? Look, the long and short of it is that it is a transport month yes. and one thing that will be very uh, 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 visible mm. will be the, uh, the uh, programs which mm. will be rolled out to the whole month mm. Mm. Um, uh, uh, which are related to transport itself mm. and as a, as a Tegwin Transport Authority we are we, we, we working with different stakeholders mm. and I mean the issue of safety is critical so there are safety programs that will be happening uh, around the city you know working together with the 
other transport operators that are there, you know, yeah. in conjunction with Santaco and all those, all, all the other operators that are there. Mm. And also, oh, I know that um, provincially we also collaborating with the KZN Department of Transport as well. Mm -hmm. Metrofic had a meeting this morning to see how we complement each other in the program itself. So there's yes. quite a number of activities happening, and we're also focusing most of those activities for us as Tegwin Transport Authority within the the, the C3 route, the Go Devon route itself, to show that we, we, we're getting there mm -hmm. and we're excited about it. Mm -hmm. Devon has been chosen as one of the pilot cities for e-mobility strategy. Yeah. Please tell us more about that. How is it going to benefit um, Etebini? It's exciting. I mean, um, <laughs> in the midst of all the challenges and to, to be seen as worthy uh, uh, of becoming one of the pilot sites, for e-mobility within the country is, is huge. Mm -hmm. So we currently, what we, we're busy with, we are in discussion or leading discussions um, uh, on e-mobility mm -hmm. from both public and private uh, transport pers perspective. Um, we know that due to the issues of climate change and, and how we're trying to mitigate the decline in our environmental envi uh, in our environment, electric, electric uh, 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 <coughs> uh, vehicles becomes now the order of the day. Yeah. So uh, on that basis, we're still drawing best practices from those who've already started before and looking at the challenges that were faced and the lessons learned from those challenges. You know, you don't want to, go and, you don't want to pay school fees twice. Yeah. If they've paid for it, so we might as well benefit out of that. So we are in those uh, negotiations, uh, not negotiations, but more collaborative discussions mm -hmm. to see how best can we then overcome what they went through mm -hmm. so that we can have a, a leap into the implementation. Mm -hmm. The other thing that we're looking at is soon the city will be introducing electrical buses. That's where we want to start. But you, when you introduce electrical uh, buses, you want to ask yourself a question, what are you trying to solve? and surely is the issue of uh, carbon emission. And mm. So in doing that, you need to then prepare the roadways on which these yeah. buses will be traveling. So currently as the roads are, you want to do some sort of a um, improvements on those. Mm. But then if you know that traditionally when you do or build your roads, there's quite a lot of carbon emissions, you know, looking at the material that we're using. So which, which means then, in terms of the value chain, we need to look at the uh, other materials that one can use to ensure that we still become uh, uh, environmentally sustainable. Mm -hmm. Doesn't help, say, you're putting electrical buses, but you're still, in, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, contributing to high uh, carbon emissions. Mm -hmm. It doesn't help anyone. So we, we, we it's more, it's exciting because it's more on an infrastructure part of it as well as the, the vehicles themselves. So it's going to be quite a lot happening in that. And as a result, the, the creation of the new value chain in the market is immense. Mm. So people should now get into the idea of the new mm. than the old. And, mm. uh, and I'm excited that we're going to be part of that. Mm. Please tell us about the partnership between uh, the ATMU Transport Authority and the Durban Art Gallery. What are yeah. we hoping to achieve? What are the objectives? Yeah. I think, you see, when, when, we, when we implemented, or when we started implementing the, the Go Durban, we looked at a broader picture. Mm. It was not only focused on getting the bus on the road. Yeah. It was to say, what are the other impacts around mm. that this program will actually uh, uh, give to the participating communities uh, alongside the route itself. So the, 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 the issue of arts is actually aimed at encouraging communities mm -hmm. along the routes to own the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, you can do it di in different ways, but we saw that if you can harness this uh, 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 experience or uh, the, the gifts that these kids have got around where the, 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 the infrastructure is into the space and use their artistic gifts to show what transport is all about. Yeah. That becomes now, you know, it's something that they've co-created, if I can use the term, and they actually take ownership of it. Yeah. And, and knowing that that's my art and looking at somebody trying to vandalize it, you know, it, 
hits you differently. It's no longer theirs, but it's ours. So that's what we're trying to, to, to zoom into, looking at young people to, 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 to deal with that. And also looking at the issue of social and economic impact to the communities as well. As they're doing that, they get exposed. Yeah. As they get exposed, and I mean, then the arts itself will then take over yeah. and, and really give them opportunities that they, they, they're looking for or mm -hmm. that they deserve. And I think that will assist quite a bit. The project that is being uh, focused on at the moment is piloted through the Queen Nandi uh, station precinct. Our go Devon, one of our go Devon stations, mm -hmm. and it's going to be quite a lot happening there. Mm -hmm. So that will include the workshops that will be going on there, exhibitions, and also the final revealing and handover of different artistic uh, 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 environments within the areas and the communities that are in the in the space. So watch the space; it's going to be exciting. Mm -hmm. And uh, we cannot talk about um, transport and not mention road safety. Yep. Um, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that is very true. Yeah. Um, so how does the transport um, or ETA strategy speak to road safety? What are the improvements yeah. uh, that are currently taking place or future plans to ensure road safety at all times? Okay. And I think also here we require a bit of context. It's, it's important. I mean, uh, we, we have quite a lot of uh, incidences that are happening on the roads. and. And they say data is wealth. Mm -hmm. So we, we're getting quite a lot of data related to incidences that are happening. Mm -hmm. And that data assists us to develop strategies to respond to these incidences mm -hmm. in order to ensure that we improve road safety. Mm -hmm. And as such, the programs that we develop are more responsive to what the data is telling us on the incidences that are happening. So if, for instance, we, 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 we use a certain technology to do a traffic calming, for instance, that is informed by what had happened and how do we I mean, ensure that it doesn't continue. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's one of the key things that we're looking at. And the furthermore is what we're trying to do, especially within the transport in the month, is looking at those hotspots. Because with the data that you get, you can map around what hotspots you have mm -hmm. for incidences and so forth and and that that will be an ongoing thing to ensure that these hotspots are taken care of and whatever lessons we learn from these hotspots and the, the the responses in terms of strategy that we put in place can be then rolled out throughout the city as well and I think it's also to note that road safety is not an issue that we're highlighting only during transport month mm -hmm. This is just to say, this is one of the things that we're doing, but it's something that happens on, on, on an ongo ongoing basis. Yeah. Go Durban Academy has been making headlines for all the right reasons. Yeah. Please tell us more about this. Tell us about these achievements. It's, it's, exci it's, it's exciting as well, given that we, <laughs> we, we have so many challenges within our city, but mm -hmm. it's important to also take time to celebrate where there are wins. Right. And that's very important. That's something that I realized that we actually actually not doing well in. Mm. So um, the major achievement was uh, for the uh, <coughs> Sport Development Program of the Year mm -hmm. uh, Awards, which took place in 2019, uh, it's, uh, Sports Awards. And uh, the, the, we, had, we actually won two uh, awards in Los Angeles in, yeah, this year, 2023. Mm -hmm. It was wonderful to see that our kids and the programs that we're putting in place are actually uh, yielding the results. Mm. And to ensure that we, we, we move forward and make sure that we, the programs that we have are sustainable, mm -hmm. we need to look at plans into the future. And maybe before I get to that, I think it's important to note that in those awards, uh, it included actually uh, the first black uh, female cyclist which, who represented the, the, our province. Uh, uh, in various uh, cycle uh, races and that was brilliant knowing that she was bred from the program itself yeah. and that, that's, that's, that's amazing, it's exciting. Mm -hmm. Future plans, we want to increase the, our partnership with uh, other government departments, mm -hmm. local government for that matter as well, uh, in order to ensure that we collaborate in improved service delivery. Furthermore, private sector, critical, especially in terms of sustainability as government alone, it's impossible that we can do it. Yeah. We have to be in partnership with us. And, um, and the most important thing is to ensure that whatever programs we put in place are sustainable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And 
that that will be my talk on that one. Thank you so much, Mr. Motwadi. We've come to the end of our ATV Matters podcast and hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Yeah, I appreciate it. And um, yeah. Thank you for joining us. We've come to the end of the ATV Matters podcast. Please like and subscribe across our social media pages.